forget to unmute my mic what up <laughs> <laughs> we're here ian is in the building what up how are you going i am good how are you 
So good. So nice to see your face. Yes, it's been a while. Can everybody hear Ian okay uh, in the chat? What up, everyone in the chat? Uh, Ash, you were here so early. You got here, like, bright and early. Scarlett is here. Katie, what up? Nice to see you. I Spy Cosplayer. Benny Chapman, really nice to see you here as well. Sydney. Uh, Andy Brom, what up? So good to see you here. Joshy, Joshy in the building. So good. Ian sounds great. Big thumbs up. Um, that's so good to hear. <laughs> uh, I'm so excited about this chat with you. Cherie's here. Oh my God. My bestie's here in the chat. So everything is okay. What a great Hello. day. Yes, gorgeous. Um, uh, there was somebody that just followed and I missed their name and I don't think my latest follower has updated yet. So whoever that person was, hello. Jazz Meadows has just, uh, joined the chat as well. <laughs> what up Jazz? It's really good to see you, uh, in the chat. It feels like, you know, usually we'd see each other in the pit and now we only see each other in my chat when I stream. Oh, we've got a raid. Oh, we've got a raid. Midnight. I don't know anything about this. You have to explain this. <laughs> okay, so the homie, Midnight Rush, uh, mm -hmm. who was just streaming, is basically bringing all the people from his stream and dumping them in my stream. So right. it's very okay. cool when that happens. Hi, Rush. Nice to see you. Hi, <laughs> everybody that was in Rush's stream. I saw that you were doing a test. Yeah, I did see that. Um, hope the test went well and everything is looking and sounding great. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, cool. You were using that new audio thing, I think, that um, Shu showed us the other day, which is cool. Thicky's in the building, Matt Hickey. Thick Daddy. Thick Van Dyke. So good to see you. <laughs> no more crappy music. Well, that's what we like to hear, Rush. Uh, we're joined uh, with a really amazing friend of mine, Ian Laidlaw. Amazing music photographer as well. Um, very good to have you on the, uh, on the show today. And amaz amazingly, I'm, uh, loving your locks. I was just saying your hair is just, I haven't seen you in like how long? Five months? Uh, yeah. Well, Probably last, longer. Ma well, it was like March was the last time we were shooting shows. I think that was the last one I shot was back in early March. Really. I actually think the last time I saw you was at like a zoo show that you were shooting. Yeah. I, don't, I actually don't even know if you oh saw God. me that night, but I was um, there <laughs> with Sosie. Uh, <gasps> Ice House was playing. Did oh, you that's shoot right. that? Jeez. Yeah, yeah, so that was back in Feb early February. Yes. Oh, God. Yes. Uh, Matt, uh, Matt in the chat saying, I started a stream five, ten minutes ago. I had no idea you were streaming. Matt, I made an announcement in my stream announcements that I was streaming at noon today. So <laughs> I had to change it up this week. All my streams are at different times this week. So surprise. You don't know how to read. Okay. Well, uh, I appreciate that you are here. Oh my God. Watto's in the building. Buzz, buzz. It's your boy. Matt Waddingham also here. <laughs> so nice to see Watto in the chat. Uh, welcome to Alia. Thanks, uh, thanks for following. <laughs> this is noon my time. Yes, it is. We're throwing everybody in a spin today. It's not my usual time. Uh, Matt, what I said, he likes the scarf, by the way. Uh, oh, Kim... it's mandatory here. Like, it's not fashion. It's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we actually have to wear masks, aka any type yeah. of, uh, face covering. So scarves will do. You yeah. like a gangster. What up, Patty? Nice to see you here. Bats. Tanya is in the chat as well. Lovely to see you here. DT just saw you uh, join the chat as well. Um, yeah, the, she's saying that some of her online classes is miss, making her miss my streams. But 9 p.m. where you are at Patty. That's awesome. So good. Um, I am excited about today's interview. I just saw uh, K. Is it Kim? Kim McGovern just uh, followed as well. So what up to you? Lovely to see you here. We're going to pull up Ian's website. We're going to uh, get into this interview in a sec, but I really wanted to just wanted to say thank you to everybody that showed up. I know it's a different time and I appreciate it. 10 PM your time, Rush. Let's go. Mm. Uh, Min's in the chat as well. What up? Nice to see you. <laughs> uh, oh yes. My night bot does need updating. I can do that right now. Thank you for that. 
I forgot to do that. I have a, a night bot that says who my guest is and I definitely need to update that. I'll do it on stream because I forgot to do it before. Uh, while I'm doing that, Ian, how are you? Tell us, tell us how every how you've been going over the past couple of months. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. If, uh, do I want to depress everyone? Like, no. Uh... <laughs> I think I think uh, being realistic is what we're all about here. Like, we all feel it. So. Um... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's obviously the first time everything shut down was a bit surreal. Like everyone obviously had to adjust to a new life. Uh, you know, there's that positive of hope that came through with like potential festivals and shows again, and then obviously second wave and Victoria, Melbourne, especially being in a hard lockdown has been pretty difficult, but I mean, I've adjusted to it as best I can, like definitely comes in waves and flows of, you know, emotions and how much I enjoy it and how much I loathe it. But mm. it's the first day of spring and it's lovely out here and, you know, I've done Pretty much, I've turned into like someone who's retired basically. Like all I, <laughs> all I do is go for like, I've been exercising a lot. So I've been going for like 10K runs every day. I've been learning ah, to cook. Ah, so good. You know, I've been learning to cook. I've been learning French. I've been sort of just relaxing and just watching baseball and football and not doing a hell of a lot. And it's been kind of good to do nothing in a way. So it's kind of good. You know what our lives are like. We're very on the go, like, you know, something will pop up at the last minute and next thing you know, you're out for all hours and mm. it can re it can wreak havoc on your time frame. but it's been good to go to bed early. And, you know, I've been waking up super early, feeling more energized. So it's definitely kind of been, well, yeah, it feels like I'm retired at 30, how old am I? 36, pretty much retired. Oh, I feel you a hundred percent. Alison, well, Alison, I just saw you pop up in the chat and Alison oh. was in America and heard you say first day of spring and was very confused. So. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, also, hello to little Brit. Uh, Brittany Long is also in the chat. She said to say hello to you. So that's hello. very cute. I think I've updated the Nightbot now. So when you see that, it'll have a link to Ian's Instagram. So please follow him. He's an incredible photographer. I've got your work up as we speak as well. So your website is just scrolling through some stuff, which is cool. Uh, low base is in the chat as well. Lovely to see you here. Um, you're not invisible. I'm sorry. I can see you. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, look, I totally, I totally uh, understand how you feel. Um, I, I definitely have had those periods, uh, of weird, just feeling super weird and, but I have actually eased into it now. And I think, um, Twitch has definitely been responsible for keeping me sane, which is very, very cool. Yeah, I mean, when I saw you start this, I was like, I wish I had the motivation and drive that you had because, like, unfortunately at my age, sometimes my interests in what I do have just, you know, they dip so low that I just stop caring. You but know I that I'm older than you, Ian. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Not by much. Not by much. I know, I, know what, I, I totally know what you feel. It's, um, yeah. it's actually how my anxiety manifests. So it's like mm. my, I, um, I suffer from... Um, a weird form of anxiety that uh, drives me in a in a weird way to be very productive. So I utilize that when yeah, I can. Pretty, yeah, that's yeah. really good. Yeah, I guess it's the positive, uh, the positive of the anxiety. But um, yeah, that is a Slipknot uh, photo that you saw before, Elle. I think it's back up yeah. as well. And also uh, Peter Sharp is in the building as well. Mr. Sharp. Mr. Sharp Dog. So good to see you. <laughs> The, in, the interview that we had he him on was the craziest stream of my oh. entire life. That was just, <laughs> that was just nuts. Oh my God. I think that was my, the first time I saw what you do with Twitch that I was completely confused by it all. I have no oh idea. Oh my God. Uh, like where are these things that, coming from? Oh, wow. The music wouldn't turn off. I, I know. Gift, <laughs> I was gifted all of these subscriptions in one stream. It was so funny because um, I... I had just met with um, Nikon like a few days before and I was like, you definitely need to like catch this stream. It's going to be a really great interview. And the girl, Sarah, she was like lurking in that stream. And I just don't think she knew what was going on because it was so crazy. I don't, I'm like, Peter, I don't think Peter knew what was going on. I know, poor Peter. I was like, I'm, look, it's not usually like this. Okay, this is like a, a quite a unique experience. So, it was um, good though. It was interesting to see everyone kind of, yeah, 
go a little bit crazy. Go a bit crazy. Daniel Bedford has joined the chat, said five minutes of work break left. So nice to see him. Um, and Kiki's here as well. So that's really great to see Kiki. Benny, it was not, uh, it was a little bit different than the twerking incident. <laughs> it was, <laughs> the twerking incident was also crazy, but this was, uh, this was on a different level. That's for sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> ne never mind, Ian. Never mind. It's fine. Oh, hello. Oh, oh. Um, hello, Megan, as well. Thank you for joining the chat. <laughs> His face. Yeah. He's like, uh, twerking. Mm -hmm. Michelle, what are you doing on this stream that I don't know about? <laughs> uh, what up, TLD? Lovely to see you in the chat today as well. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, Britt said, don't even ask. <laughs> Look, I, I set, I set my, I set them a challenge and, uh, the community came through. So <laughs> I learned my lesson. Okay. Don't ever, don't ever tell them that they can't do something because they will absolutely meet that goal. So. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I'm going to go through, um, which, which of your sections, where do you want me to start in terms of your work? Does, oh, do you have a preference? Or well, I, I haven't done, this website's kind of like, pretty much up until I sort of mostly started doing Instagram stuff, so it's quite a few years old, so there's nothing in the documentary catalogue, because I was okay. in the process of updating everything, so there's nothing in that, but I mean, you can go through the 35 mil and okay, the cool. live and the portrait. And, cool, let's start know, with 35 mil, that'd be cool. Cool. Um, and I just saw that one Beatriz also uh, joined the chat. So hello. And hello to anyone that I've missed. The chat's moving really fast today. So hello. You're appreciated. Thank you so much for being here. We've got Ian Label here today. We're having a look at your 35mm film work. Um, while you tell us how you got to shoot in this crazy industry, call yourself a music photographer, that like is the stupidest thing. Like why? Did we do that? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I, I just, I'm not good at anything else, really. <laughs> That's probably, like, I mean, for me, the reason I started photographing bands was because all my friends were in bands, which, you know, as you know, cliche as it sounds, it's true, just all my friends were in bands. <laughs> I can't play anything. I don't have a musical bone in my body. I've, you know, attempted to learn instruments like the bass, and even that I couldn't do, so I was never... I never could connect my brain and my fingers between like anything. And I mean, I've always wanted to learn to play the piano. That's like the one instrument I've always wanted to learn, but I could never do it. So, you know, I was always around musicians and, you know, I would go to shows from an early age. I think the first show I ever went to was when I used to live in Fiji with my parents. So I went to this reggae concert in the stadium and I was like, I think that's 12, I was in year six there. And that was the first time I went to a live show. And then I came back and a few years later, I was like, by 16, I could start going to shows. So I would, you know, go to these live shows, get into all, you know, a mess. And, you know, I used to just love it. And, you know, combining uh, a camera with that was just like the purest form of creative energy that I could handle. Like I was, yeah, I just kind of got hooked pretty much straight away. And I still remember very vividly the first show I ever shot, which was at Vic on the Park in Enmore in Sydney it was my friend's band and it was January 3rd 2003 and I had a little Olympus 35mm camera and I remember like you know there was you know uh, just a little point and shoot I remember taking the film in to get it developed and getting the little 6x4 prints back and I was just blown away mm. and, and like the photos are the worst in the world like I still got them but they are it was just from then, as soon as I started that and I got those first results back, I was just mm. hooked on the energy that I could capture with music. Like, so mm. freeze framing, like just freezing, freezing moments of energy, like, you know, because it was all guitar rock and my friends were in guitar bands. So that was kind of uh, how it started. And then from then it was like five nights a week. Anytime there was a show, like it would just be like, go out, shoot, 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 shoot. Just, I, I mean, this is, you know. I mean, close to 20 years ago now. So there was digital cameras were only just coming into the forefront where like, you know, the first, like, I think it was like the Nikon D2X, like a 4.2 megapixel camera had just been released and it was ridiculously expensive. And I was always very purist. I was like, I never shoot digital, like blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, I would just constantly get hooked on it. And then I'd just, you know, make friends with bands and just keep shooting, go up to different places, go to different cities, just constantly have my camera on me. And, 
I never felt compelled to shoot anything other than music. So it was kind of, yeah, it was that sort of, it was, the, it was that one thing that just hooked me. It's like, you know, I just got into that. So, you know, it's like finding a sport that you love, like one sport, you don't play every sport, you just play one. And for me, it was, you know, music with my camera was how I started and what, 17, 18 years later and I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it. Yeah. Well, I, th I think you made the right choice, Ian. You're very good at it. Uh, it's been, oh, it's, yeah. You are. It's <laughs> oh, great looking at your work um, and there's lots of love in the chat for you as well, which is really cool. Uh, what I just said, hot dang, that Camp Cope one, which I adore this photo. Um, was that first ever press shot? First ever press shot, yeah. yeah. And I, I've told the story about um, the time that you weren't able to shoot them and you sent me along and... Mm -hmm. Did that end up uh, becoming the cover of their record? Yeah, it did. <laughs> it's, the cra it's the craziest story though, Ian, because like they wanted me to shoot Polaroids and I never shot Polaroids in my life, ever. And uh, they, I was so nervous because you had always shot them and always done like you know them justice and you had such a beautiful aesthetic with them and relationship so i was really really nervous about that shoot um but thankfully it did go really well and they did use it as the, at the cover of their album so it did go well but um this is like i was kind of talking about this the other day about how friends in the industry that you have like when you can't do jobs you then refer jobs all of the time so like having relationships with other photographers that are, you know, genuine friends, but also that you trust to do a good job yeah. is like actually really important. Well, actually it's funny because I remember another show that I got, that I recommended for you because it came up with someone, I think it, you were, I think Jordan Nunn's posted a photo of Post Malone and I remember I got asked to shoot his corner show and I couldn't and I gave them your uh, name. Yes. I said to me, I was like, make sure you get Michelle because she'll kill it because I knew that you already had like an affinity for hip hop and you know rise was out and i think i'd already had a copy and i was like yeah if you want anyone get this get this person she'll slay it and then yeah. i remember thinking i remember thinking like later on actually i was like god oh, damn i really should have shot that i'm not precious over that stuff but you know no it's just... that's a, that's hilarious because that particular um i've also told the story about that particular uh touring company black banning me not long after that as well so <laughs> what thanks thanks did you not, did i not tell you that story no. oh my god this the lessons in what you tweet uh <laughs> publicly <laughs> but i tweeted no i actually replied to a tweet um i like to be i actually like to be really open about this stuff because it like it shows you that people are always watching your social media presence and I have toned down a lot because <laughs> it definitely has got me in trouble being uh, a bit of a loud mouth on Twitter. But um, this is actually wasn't even something I tweeted. I had replied to a tweet of a friend of mine who had tweeted, what is a post Malone? And I wrote back someone that needs a bath because I thought that was hilarious. I mean, he looks like he needs a bath. Let's be real. I mean, where's the lie? There's nothing. <laughs> You know, but, call, um, call a spade a spade, it's fine. <laughs> uh, it wasn't long after that particular show and that particular promoter saw my tweet and uh, was <laughs> not happy with me. Ah, oh, fuck it, whatever. I mean, yeah. You live and you learn is what I say from that. I mean, I apologised, I removed the tweet, was like, I, I, like, I get it, you know. Probably wasn't the most professional <sighs> thing to say. Was funny though. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's not going to lose sleep over it. Like, you know, I don't think it's going to affect ticket sales for them. You know, it's like, like just relax, people. Just exactly. calm. Exactly. Rush, oh, Rush has just said in the chat, he did make a fan puke because of the way he smelled. So I'm just saying, like... Wow. I'm just saying, I mean, you, the the, you were spot on. The truth was there. I was spot on. I wasn't saying anything about his musical ability or his talent. I think he's very talented. He's a great performer. He just looked... Like he needed a bath. I was making an observation. And that's what I mean. This was this for the those are the days where it was like he wasn't playing Rod Lavers. He wasn't headlining Reading and Leeds. You know, he was playing no. the Corner Hotel. You know, it like he was, was on. A, yeah, it was eight hundred people. It was like a yeah. tiny, tiny show. It was actually a really great show to shoot. So I appreciate you putting me forward for that. Do, um, do you want to know the real reason why I turned off it? Why? I love this. 
Well, in the brief that I got sent, I remember, and I've still got, I actually looked at this not long ago, but I remember looking at the brief and I was like, no, I'm not doing social photography. I cannot stand doing pat snaps of people in crowds. I'm like, I, it's the vein of my existence. And I just, I actually think I said no to it and still did it because I don't yeah. do them. I don't do socials. Like I absolutely no, refuse to do them. I'm like, I can't stand them. You want, if you want me at your show, you're not getting socials. I'm sorry. No, and uh, I was the same. I remember just looking at it and thinking like, I'm not someone who like, I mean, I'm not self-conscious or like, I don't worry about crowds and stuff, but I just know that for me, I find it very, it's very intrusive for me. It's like, it's like, you know, I just can't, I could not fathom doing it. I just think it's rude. So I just was like, I'm not going to do this. Plus, I mean, I wasn't in town anyway, so yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I couldn't do it. But I remember just seeing that and being like, yeah. that's so funny. I'm like, I, I'm pretty sure that I didn't, or if I did, I, I would have done a really, really half ass job at it. That's for sure. Cause I, I yeah. mean, it's not that like, I'm very, you know me, I'm very like social and will go up to anyone. Um, but I just don't like doing them at a gigs because like people are just so annoying. They're just like, they're often rude and like, I just like, I can't be bothered with this. I just want to take photos of the show. So. Well, and especially in a place like the corner, it's so packed, you know, there's not enough room to walk around, you get not enough room to get like yeah. you know, distance between subject and camera. You know, if you're at a totally. festival and people are just like, take my photo, you're like, oh, all right, all let me just right. cut. I think too, when you start out doing that stuff, it's like the stuff I, I started out like really, really, really early doing nightclub photography, which is yeah. just like, like yeah. if you're ever reminded of those days, you're just like, oh, come on. I feel like I'm a little bit past this. Not that I'm ever above anything because I don't, I just don't roll like that, but. But yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's yeah. Uh, and I remember just thinking of that and I was like, nah, no, I'm not doing this. <laughs> so funny uh yes yeah exactly kl uh kl is it kl m the things you see at nightclubs i can tell you i was like oh i mean i just did anything at the start just whatever you know whatever i could shoot i would shoot so um uh which i just had a question about like um do you think i mean i know that what i think the answer is to this but do you think there's a like career defining moment where things either things kind of really turned for you or like people refer to that work of yours mm. maybe I'm trying to think i mean personally for me i know moments of getting like opportunities really helped me personally but maybe in terms of like defining things the first big thing that i think was really big for me in terms of like I guess maybe just people seeing it was when I did the first Leon Bridges run. Yeah, I'm just looking for, at that um, one of well I don't know if it's the first one, but I'm looking at one of your black and white shots and I would have said that as well. I feel like that was yeah. a real a moment for you. Yeah, because I've been shooting a lot already and I was already working for, you know, I'd already been shooting festivals and stuff officially and, you know, touring with bands and whatnot. But I think that was like the first one that was like, for it was like, you know, for, for years, like growing up, like I remember Rolling Stone magazine was like my, I was like my Bible. It was everything to me. Like, mm. I loved it. I always wanted to get, like, I remember thinking years and years ago, like, you know, early 2000s. When you would open up a, an old magazine, they used to have the names of the photographers in the spine, really, really small. And I remember thinking to myself, if, if I can see my name in that little spine one time for a photo that I've taken, that's it, I'm done, I quit. Like, I don't need anything more than that. That for me is a validation of my, like my, my I guess my drive to get to a level that I thought was, you know, attainable. But I remember the first time I saw my name in Rolling Stone, it was like, this it was massive it was yes. like that and it was that i mean i'd had a few photos published in there before but none were ever credited which much to my annoyance but that was the first time i think seeing my name like not only in the content piece but then big in the actual like photo essay spread that we did i was just kind of like all right this is this is kind yeah. of cool like i think i bought a few copies for my mom as well like yes <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> yes yes, yes. Yeah. totally that was, yeah i think that was definitely the first first like sort of big thing for me yeah i definitely think and like um i agree with everything that you said like you were very well established by that point mm. but it really i don't know not i i think not um it was like a stamp you know like not only yeah. was like the work was exceptional 
Um, I think it just made anyone who, like, I mean, everyone already knew who you were, but everyone was just like, holy shit. Like, this is, this is like next level. Well, I think too, considering how he, like, who he was as an artist and how he stepped up and then, you know, in, the, in like the months later, he was performing for like, you know, President Obama and he was winning Grammys and, you know, it's like he had stepped up his career even more so, you know. So I remember when I first pitched the idea to the promoter who's a friend of mine and then got in touch with the record label and then got in touch with Rolling Stone. It was just kind of like all the pieces fell in really naturally. And I remember I heard he was coming out for Falls Festival and I think it was, I think it was on like three in the afternoon. Like it wasn't a big slot or anything like that. He was still quite... Uh, unknown but he had released a couple of singles that i caught wind of and um like jazz and blues and soul music or something i've loved for a very very long time and i remember thinking wow this guy's got a really good sound he's got a really clean image like imagine photographing him imagine if he ever comes to australia and i caught wind of that and i was like let's see if i can do something with this because this i think his image suited my aesthetic and mm. yeah totally. and it all and then it all fell into place. And I mean, I still look back at those photos and the first tour was great. Like I did two subsequent tours after he came out with him and that was really cool. But it was that first run when he was doing like Billboard, he was doing Corner Hotel. Like it was still small stuff. It was his first run. So yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that was, that was really fun. And it was good too because I didn't know him. I didn't know his band. I didn't know his management. Like it was, it was like two random people coming together and saying, let's try and create. And, you know, one of my favorite images of all time is him dancing uh, in an alleyway by himself. And it's like, it's the only photo I actually have it printed in my house on the wall. I don't have any on my work. Oh. Is that um, in your portrait section? Like, can we have a look at that photo if I pull uh, it up? Yeah, it should be in the portrait section, actually. I'll pull it up. Let's see if we can, uh, yeah. we can see it. Um, him dancing. I'm going to look for it, and then I'll go back through these shots later on. So I'm trying to think of where it would be. Oh, I'll just scroll through. We'll go through these again anyway, but um, I'll do a little... I'll do a little fast scroll. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm trying to think if I even put it. I should have put it in there. It's definitely on my Instagram somewhere. Like I said, this has been so. Oh yeah, maybe I'll go to your Instagram while we're doing this. I'll see um, how far down it is. Uh, you, you touched on something really interesting then, but like about walking into um, walking in somewhere where you've never met people before, like the band and all that sort of stuff. So. Um, how do you usually deal with that? Like, cause that's something that if you've never dealt with that situation, it can be actually quite intimidating. Yeah. But I mean, I've, I've been a talker my whole life. Like I can get along with anyone, you know, I'll always find common ground with something like, is, I've got, this, uh, is this the shot that you mean? This is, um, it's in that same sequence, but I think it's okay. further down. Okay. But I mean, that was part of the same, yeah, the same moment. Yeah. Just trying to find where the hell I posted it. Like, I know it's somewhere in there. <laughs> Probably ages away, but um, that's right. I'll scroll. Mm, it's great seeing all your work. Yeah, it's fun to look back on sometimes. I mean, I get so bored of it. I'm sure, like yourself, you know, you get sick of looking at your own work so often. You just kind of go, oh, yep, yep. Especially at the moment because there's no new stuff. I'm just like, boring. Can I shoot something new for God's I sake? <laughs> Tell me, I don't know the last time I picked up my camera. Uh, I actually had to um, this week because uh, Nikon sent me the new Z5. So I had to like I th do some practice stuff for the workshop that I'm doing this week. But other than that, I haven't shot that much. <laughs> I saw you, I saw that you're doing that on Thursday. Thursday. Come nice. hang. Come yeah, hang. Well, I don't know. I'm going to have to check my schedule. It's pretty ah. hectic at the moment. Like <laughs> Back to back shoots. In between French lessons and walking 10Ks a day and learning to cook. I'm like, I don't know if i got time for this. But no, I okay. love that. Um, I just saw I just saw that Nate Hill has just entered the chat as well. Um, and he said, love both your work. Uh, I just bought one of Nate's prints and I'm so Ooh. excited. Because it arrived yesterday. Um, I can't find this photo, so it's I'm going to go... I, I found it. It's in, oh. posted in February 2018, so further down, further oh, down. further down. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I just really so. want to show this photo. Keep going down. Where are we? Not that one with the sunglasses? Uh, no, you'll be uh, a bit behind me. Oh, okay. That's aloe black. That, uh. Oh, it is too. Oh my God, that's so racist of me. I can't believe I did that. That is... Okay, so it's a few more down. So keep going down. This this one, I bet you. No, it's no. Four. 
I, mean, I, I really like I really like this shot, so let's just like spend a moment okay. on this because sure. this is great, but we'll go we'll go down a little bit as well. Let's have a look at that one. Yes. Okay, that's actually yeah, so that was he's actually wearing a gold suit. You know, oh. it's actually really, really nice, but um I remember we'd had we had lunch and it was after sound check, pre doors, and I remember we were just walking around the back uh back streets of Chinatown. And it was me and the Sony publicist, Crystal, and um, we were just chatting. And, um, you know, I was just shooting him, like, against the wall, like, looking very, you know, now he looks very stylish. Yeah. And then and then we were talking, and um, he mentioned that when he was growing up, he wanted to be a backup dancer for Usher. So oh, he, so he was, I like, a classic. That. Yeah, so he was really into, like, hip-hop, like, you know, like, you know, urban dancing or whatever. I don't know what his term is, but he... Uh, <laughs> He was like, he's like, oh, you know, like, he's like, how about, how about a dance for you? And I was like, all right, cool. And it was in this alleyway and it was lucky because it was really clean. There was no passers by and it was just myself and Crystal the rep. And then he was just going back and forth, like between the walls in a very thin. So he's just kind of moving, twisting, turning, kind of like Michael Jackson. Like it was very, like it was beautiful. And I remember I just sat there and I just kept firing. Yeah, there you go. And he just kept firing over and over and he just kept moving. So there was no music. He just kept moving. Ah, oh, that's so side. cool. And then there's a whole sequence of these photos that just... Dude, uh, this yeah. needs to be the biggest print on your wall, by the way. This needs to be like... It's have the you only seen, one. Yeah. Have, you, have you seen my Kendrick wallpaper? I have. Yeah, this needs to be a wallpaper, I think. Be, well, I don't think... Yeah, I don't think... Like, I don't think Skinny my house is... <laughs> wallpaper. <laughs> uh, Colum, welcome to the chat. Uh, thanks for the follow. Really appreciate you being here. Um... Benny Chapman said, if I got one shot like that, I would quit. And they said it's so good. But I've said that so many times in my career. It's like, I just, yeah, yeah, if yeah. I can get that one shot, if I can get that one magazine cover, if I can get that, you know, one yeah, portrait, I'm done. Yeah, and then you get it, and then we all have new goals. I know, as soon as I reach those goals, I have, like, another 10. That's but how it, my brain works. <laughs> but I think that's a, that's a good part to get to. It's like, it's not settling for something that, you know, might take years to attain, but then once it's again, it's like, great. So I've gotten to here. What am I going to yeah. do next? Like, let's step yes. up. Let's keep going. Like, Constantly you know. evolving. I'm yeah. never satisfied. Like, it, you know, um, there's just like, I don't, there's not like a level of success for me that is the ceiling. Like there's always something that's yeah. further in the future. And Ash has just asked you, uh, what are the, what are your goals for the future? That ties really nicely into what have you what do you haven't achieved yet that you'd like to achieve? I mean, believe it or not, the other day I was going to uh, like in the midst of you know it was still winter. I had this you know Brian Duffy moment. I don't know if you know who he is, but he's this old fashioned photographer from London who was part of this like very successful you know new wave swing photographer movement back in the 60s and he got to a level where he was thinking about what he wanted to do next and he couldn't think of anything and he took all of his negatives into his backyard and just started setting fire to them he's just like i just don't i don't need to do anything more oh. and not, but someone actually came and smelt fumes and they went out and put them out they saved half of them but he lost so much of his work and i could oh. i could relate to that moment because i was like i'm just like what do i want to do next and i couldn't think of anything i was like maybe i'm done Maybe I don't need to do anything more. Like I thought about what I've done in my career so far and there's not really anything or anyone left that I like, like would sort of kill to shoot. I like to work very naturally. Like if it happens, it happens. So I don't really set myself anything more than being content and knowing that I enjoy what I do. So having enjoyment with yes. what I do is first and foremost because, you know, once, once I made the leap from part-time into this is my profession this is my career this is what I pay the rent with this is what I support myself with this is how I live there are times where it becomes so rudimentary that it's just like going to a regular day job you know like I'm pressing a button to make money so sometimes creativity gets lost and you end up finding yourself going well am I satisfied spending all these nights out am I satisfied spending every weekend away am I satisfied not being able, like being away from my partner or my family and I mean you like the last what, year and a half of your life you've spent so much time away you know yeah. you must know exactly what it feels like to be away from your you know just even being away from your husband and being away from home and your dogs and your friends and you know every day can be like Groundhog Day so you get a little bit like I mean I don't want to yeah, I don't want to be resentful for what I've done. Like, I'm very proud of what I've achieved. So I think for me, the future just is very obviously uncertain for all of us. 
and I think I just want to be happy. Like I just want to, be happy. Enjoy, I, I just want to enjoy taking, like creating, doing stuff. Yes. With, like, that's kind yes. of it. That's yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's really interesting because I, I don't think I've ever got to that point where I felt like it's a job. Like I genuinely really love every day. Like even even with the slog of stuff, like. I think because, you know, I also started photography quite late and had mm. gone through like, you know, the corporate rat race and knowing, understanding like the nine to five to me is a prison. Like that is, <laughs> that is my definition of hell. So for me now, like every day is like a blessing. So I guess even in the most mundane, mundane situations, like I do try and look at, like try and be really grateful and yeah. positive because I think that the alternative it's like I mean, the worst. Yeah. Well, I think so too. And you know, like like yourself, I spent many years having you know warehouse jobs. You know, mm. um, I'm actually a builder by trade. Like I did my building trade with my dad when ah, I was 16. I so yeah, so like I mean, it's not something I've done for a long time. But you know, I'm sitting here in moments of not knowing when we're going to tour again, not knowing when I can shoot again. I'm like, maybe I should pick the tools up again, or maybe I should try something else. And you know, my my brain has definitely gone a different direction in terms of what I want to do uh, with my camera. Like uh, out, outside of touring, I haven't shot live shows for, I mean, probably, I'd say in about a year, I probably shot maybe a dozen live shows, which I would have done that in, you know, two weeks, years yes, gone by. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I've obviously stepped outside of the live stuff as much and concentrated more on my documentary reportage and portrait work, which is yep. what I want to do. But yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, ultimately at the end of the day, it's like, there's no like Rolling Stone cover anymore. Like that kind of idea. If it came through, we got like, I mean, I'd never shot in like the NME when I got that cover was great. Like when I saw yours as well, it was like, for me, that was like, yes. Like that was something that I would have killed Beautiful. for in the old days. Cause uh... I had, I mean, I still, I don't know where they are anymore, but I had about seven, 800, copies of enemy and rolling stone that i've been buying since the age of 10 11 you know, like pull, these pull up your yeah. cover yeah i mean uh, these were these were my bibles you know oh you know, went past it i did go past it yeah um we shot the uh our successive covers yeah yeah and that's um, what i mean because it was good this one was the first print one so i remember thinking like obviously print media has gone like it, it doesn't really exist anymore but with um, mm. that one, they told me it was be the first printed edition. I was like, amazing, something tangible. I like, Tell, I something love. they sent us. It was really lovely. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, um, like, I remember, yeah, having a, my photo on an NME mm. cover was just like, I mean, I would have given anything for that five, ten years ago. So, but, but getting it now didn't make it less important. It was actually still very yeah. nerve-wracking and exciting. Like, I still get butterflies when it shoots. I'm like, you know, it's not like yeah. I've just gone, oh, cool. But, yeah, I think... You know, I always wanted a Rolling Stone cover. I don't know if that'll ever happen, but if yeah. it does, that'll that's be cool. Still, that's still on my list, Rolling yeah. Stone cover. And I mean, that's it. Like, I've toured internationally. I've done stuff with, you know, high-profile clients. I, like, I, I, I don't really have that one thing that's like, if anything, I'd love to just get a portrait of Tom Waits. Like, that'd kind of be like the uh, only thing I would probably, <laughs> I'd probably give my, uh, give one of my, I'd probably give my pinky toe for that, actually. But, um, but yeah. hey, hey, Shu, lovely to see you in the uh, chat. Nice to see you here. Um, yeah, I look, yeah, I, yeah, I think I definitely still have bucket list artists and I mean, most of them are like, you know, international. Oh, uh, Kendrick Lamar, who you have shot because you did that meet and greet and got that amazing portrait of him, which yes. I'm like so jealous of. That was actually really um, funny too, because I was, I did two nights with him and the first night it was just, I wasn't even allowed to do a test shot with him. Like I couldn't do yes. anything. I remember and, you telling me that. Yeah. <laughs> But his, um, his personal photographer, Chris Parsons, who's a buddy of mine, like we were actually chatting the other night about a whole bunch of stuff. He was saying on that Kendrick tour, that world tour he did, that only six other photographers in the entire world got to shoot Kendrick, including festivals, everything. He said it was so strict. So tight, yep. Which was cool. Like, I mean, that stuff for me was great, but I remember thinking, I know other people who would appreciate this more than me. Yeah, yeah. I would have been one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. Um, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, there's a few. I mean, most of them are like, you know, my favorite rappers. So, um, but like, you know, I, I really resonated with what you said about being happy as well because I like, you know, that that's what the rule project stuff is for me. Like, that is like my definition of happiness and being in a team where 
like all of the visual decisions, like I'm part of that creative process. Um, you know, we do everything together. Um, it's like a family mm. and it's not just, it's not just the press shots. It's, you know, it's end to end stuff. So it's like all of the live shows, all of the touring. Um, so you just become like, it's, it's just like a big creative family and it's definitely the most fulfilling thing that I've ever been involved in. So that I feel very content and happy with that, doing that particular work at the moment. Um, and, and potentially getting to do that with, you know, other artists in the future would be pretty amazing. Cause that's, that to me is like the ideal situation for a music photography, for a photographer to have that type of relationship with the artist and the team. Yeah. hundred percent. Like it's that collaborative work that you're, you know, you're using your creative vision to enhance theirs. You know, they've obviously got theirs, you know, whether it be like, you know, the, the, their live show, their, their music, their songwriting, you know, it's complementary of each other, which is why you see so many artists stick with like single photographers because they either understand their vision or they work with a, they work within certain parameters that actually benefit the artist, which is, you know, you hear a lot of, a lot of artists these days at festivals will be like, nah, I've only got one photographer and it's like just this one person. That's because they've established a trust, you know? And yeah. That's, um, Oh yes. I would love to touch on that actually about that trust element, because like, I think that's really important. That is why photo um, a lot of artists are going to banning other photographers and yeah. just saying I'm having my person um, because we've seen so many incidents where music photographers I think forget that these artists are human yeah. and um, you know will post ridiculously unflattering photos and like that's what creates this type of environment because at the end of the day they are human and if you post a really shitty photo of them that is like quite obviously not flattering um, that's going to affect how they see like pit photographers and um, press oh, photographers. 100%. I mean, that's the whole, you know, the whole, that's what happened with Beyonce. That's why she started culling photographers because there was that one very unflattering photo that became a meme. And it's like, well, no one wants that of themselves in the public eye, no matter how thick your skin is. You just want to, like, if you can control the image. And at the end of the day, too, I've, I mean, the first time I remember thinking bands or artists were stopping photographers, I was like, oh, that's a bit shitty. And then at the end of the day, I was like, no, like, who wants 40 photographers staring at them from ten, five feet away with their cameras? Like, you know, I'm not that special. Like, you know, I, do I deserve to be there over someone else? No. Like, if it's just, yes. you know, if if a if a band wants to go, I want free reign to connect with this 10,000 plus audience who have paid to see me headline a festival. I don't need 40 men in, or well, 40 people in yellow vests, you know, getting in my way. Like, it, it, I understand it can be distracting. So I could not agree more. And I I remember I think one of the first artists that oh who was it. There was like a really strict, um, you know, uh, photo release thing that came out a few years ago and it was being passed around photography circles and everyone was losing their shit. And I was the only one going, hey, I actually understand this. Like, I actually understand why, not so much the rights grabs, but like restricting photographers and being really strict. I get it. Like, when you work really closely with artists and you have conversations about how devastated they are because some photographer took like a shot that's like quite clearly almost like an upskirt photo or something yeah. like gross or just super like up the chin, really unflattering. Like they're not thinking about these people are human beings. They, um, they rely heavily on image as well. So like why be an asshole and just like completely disregard. And I've had arguments with, with people who will be like, my job is documentation. Like I, it doesn't matter if it's unflattering. Whereas I just like, vehemently disagree like yes we're there to document but like these people are human beings as well as like you know don't not forget not forgetting that that aspect well and at the end of the day too these these artists are not performing for images they don't need photographers like that's one thing i've learned yeah. over the years it's like my presence there is not depending on them selling records or you know people yeah. buying merch like they don't need me like i'm not there to you know do anything like specific but i think i remember was it taylor swift was that the the whole i think it might have been taylor swift yeah yeah and i just yeah. actually saw nate comment that queens of the stone age had a strict one yeah they, there's uh... been a, i mean there's been a lot now um well since... i mean this yeah it is funny because like even with queens i think there's a lot of a lot of artists these days have said like shoot from the sides only and that which is i mean again that's fair enough they're not restricting media but they are obviously stopping people from getting in the way but i remember queens at um when Queen's headlined Splendor, 
uh, two or three years ago. Uh, they basically, they permitted two photographers on stage. There was myself and Russell Privet from Triple J. And um, so we had to wait for the third song. Then we got escorted up on stage by the security. who was this like nine foot tall giant man who, in our heads, I'm thinking to myself, it's like, all right, you're going to have like one square inch to stand and half a second to shoot. And I'm going to be like, oh, this is going to suck. And it turns out he's like, we just kept shooting and going around and we're shooting from side to side. And then we got about five songs in. And I remember looking at Russell, we were kind of like, yo, should we like get out of here? And then he's like, have we overstayed our walk? We went up and took the tour manager, the guy's hand, like, thanks very much. He's like, oh, are you done? And I'm like, uh, yeah, like, I don't need any more. And he's like, oh, great, no worries. If you've got everything and you're happy, that's fine. Thanks very much. And I was like, hmm, that's very interesting. So I mean, yeah. like, you know, there's been definitely times where I've felt the wrath of people being like, get the hell out of the way. And then I've been, you know, there's times like that where you just kind of left go like, did not expect that. And that's very pleasant. Yeah. Uh, Alison um, was asking, like, I don't know why anyone would want to release shitty photos of an artist other than to be controversial. Um, I, I like from the, the conversation that I had with a bunch of Getty photographers a few years ago, um, I guess, first of all, the what a shitty photo is to to these guys versus the artist was mm. actually quite wildly different so like they would see something that maybe they thought was like you know an action shot or in moment but it's actually if you just look at it from the view especially of females was yeah. very unflattering like they just couldn't tell the difference and nor did they care so that was like they actually just didn't care like they yeah. were just like this is an action shot they might be like but I still think you can get passionate shots and be aesthetically pleasing at the same time and be like, like flattering, if that makes sense. There's this actually oh, there's a, sk a skill in that as well. Well, do you know the whole, you know, the whole three song rule? I mean, I've, I've probably heard a few stories, but the one real story that I remember hearing constantly over and over, the reason why the three song rule was implemented was back in the eighties with Blondie mm -hmm. because yeah. Uh, her makeup would run because those cans, it was all like open bar cans, like just mm. bright, searing, hot heat coming from these lights and it would melt, like it would make her makeup run and she found it unflattering. So she'd be like, I lost this many songs, so let's just stop it let's at that. Let's do I mean, three songs. That's well, all I've yeah. yeah, I've heard that. I've actually heard that as well. So, yeah. Um, I know. Yeah. So, but, um, yeah. Tim Oh, no, Tim was just saying, as soon as we start thinking we're bigger than the shows, we're in trouble. I definitely feel that. I also, like, I've spoken about this so many times, but, like, if there is a rule that says, like, don't, they don't want photographers, like, mm. I'm really big on just not shooting. And I know that oh, people, yeah. like, really disagree with me about that stuff as well. So, like, respecting the artist's um, wishes. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was the thing with Kendrick at Splendor as well, too. Like, I remember they'd said no photographers. And uh, I know Parsons were there, like, his team was there. And I remember talking to the publicist and I said, look, I just did two things with him in Melbourne. I know his manager. Go and ask for him and just say, do you remember this kid from, or this guy from Melbourne who shot Kendrick? Like, would he be okay? And I remember they came back and they said, yeah, it was only him. And I remember thinking there was a wall of security against the fence. There was a wall of security against the stage. Then there was me in between. And I was like, why is there double security? And they were like, well, because if photographers are going to try and sneak through and get to the front, they're actually going to be pulling them out. So, you know, they weren't even letting photographers in the first few rows, which, you know, when you find a headliner who's like, well, no photographers in the pit, a lot, some people will try and get into the front. And that's yeah. completely up to them. Like, I don't judge them for that, but that's why they had like double security. So like if we see any photographers within 10 feet of the front, we're going to get you out of there. And I'm like, they're obviously very protective, but I mean, like, a, like I... we said, it's up to the band. I do judge a little bit. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, like if you're at the back and you're going to shoot from the back of the crowd, I think like whatever, but like, you know, they've specifically said they don't want pit photographers. And if you're at the front row, it's essentially like you're a pit photographer. I just think it's, I just think it's super risky. That's what it is. It's not, it's not actually judgment. I think it's like super risky on, you know, PR seeing it or something. And, you know, as someone that's been black banned before, like you just don't want to go, <laughs> go down that route. And that's it. And if I'm working for <laughs> If you're working for a festival, then it's like, I don't want to sour that reputation by being the guy who tried to get a shot. Like, a, yeah. you know, I think it's, you it's, know it's, it's purely for selfish reasons then, isn't it? So it's just like, um, like respecting the wishes of the artist and the festival, because those relationships are actually going to be long-term. They're going to be, they're going to last longer than those Instagram likes that you, you know, most likely 
people are after when they get those shots. So like those establishing those relationships of trust, I think. Are... Yeah. Well, and I mean, if, but if you're a young photographer who's working for free for a publication that's just online, it's like you know you're there to shoot the headliner, and if you get told you can't, it's like well, I'm not going to go home. I want to see him. I want to try and shoot him. And right. That's, that's a good point. That's yeah, I mean point. that's completely understandable. That is totally understandable. You're right. I think I also forget that perspective because I just never went down that route. So I've always like, you know, I always I always see it from the artist <laughs> perspective because I've always worked with artists direct. So like that's a, that's a really um, a really great point. Yeah, I can totally vibe on that. We're having a look at some of your live work as oh, well. Yeah. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask you because you similar to me is like you've got some great relationships with artists that you work uh, like ongoing with uh, people like Courtney Barnett, the Smith Street Band, um, uh, Camp Cope. Uh, who, who's, do you have like an artist that you love working with the most or like a re relationship that you really cherish? Mm, I mean, well, I've worked with the Smith Street Band the longest of anyone. Like their manager's been my best friend for 15 plus years now. Like the, he's the reason that I ended up moving to Melbourne as well. Like. But I mean, like those guys have done a lot for me over the years. Like they took me to America when I first quit my job to become full time into this. Like I was sick of Dayton. So I'm completely thankful to them for everything they've let me do. And uh, yeah, I mean, they're definitely one of the strongest relationships I've had. But there's a lot. There's a, there's a few. Others. I mean, like I've done a lot of stuff with Glass Animals over the years since the first time they've come to Australia and stuff, which has been really nice. You know, the, and, the, and even with Courtney as well. Like the first time I met her was for a cover of of a magazine and then just became friends and would shoot stuff all the time and you know she'd just come around to my house and would shoot and then I remember she knew I was a huge Patti Smith fan and she was supporting and she ended up like surprising me with a photo pass for that and I was like oh uh, like, you know, stuff, yeah stuff like that's really really nice and yeah Courtney's uh, um Courtney is uh quite sweet like I've only worked with her once for her sound but hmm. I, I remember afterwards she sent me like a handwritten note saying Thank you so much for the photo. I've got it at my desk at work, but like I just thought that was a really sweet thing. Like that, like yeah. never happened. So it was really, yeah. really cute. No, that's yeah. really nice. Actually, it's always good to sort of yeah. You get those when you click with an artist. Like, as mm -hmm. you know, a, a, a lot of people don't don't want their photo taken. A lot of people don't. You know, I'd very... say the I'd say the majority of music artists don't love having their photo taken. It's probably something that I hear the most. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, when you click or have that that relationship where they trust you, it really is something special. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, there's stuff. Yeah, then, yeah. There's just, I mean, there's artists that I get along with very well as friends, as uh, as well as like you know, collaborative. You know, people who obviously yeah you know, document their lives. You know, they get probably sick of me. Well, they probably got they probably they probably got so used to us like pointing our camera at them that it just yeah. they just think, they just drop their guard and they forget that you're actually doing it. Which you know uh, in, yes. in my head, that's the stuff that makes the best images is when totally. you know, nothing nothing looks contrived and there's you know it's hard to get that with people that you just meet. You know, I've done yeah. a lot of portraits of a lot of people and it's just sometimes you get people who are very willing to give you something and then there are people who are just so you know. Uh, they just don't really want to give you anything. They can be a little bit like, mm, this is not what I want to do. And it's completely understandable as well. Like, it's just that uh, connecting. Yep. Connect yeah. So well, sometimes they just can't be bothered. Like, I've, um, oh, yeah. I've definitely had those assignments where you're going out for, you know, trying to shoot for somebody and, you know, you might have 10 minutes with an artist and they're just not vibing it on the day. Like, they just can't be bothered doing press. Like, that's yeah. understandable. And in those, th those instances, like, having those skills to be able to just know you can shoot something in five minutes and get something usable and get out of their hair like that'll be appreciated because you oh, just yeah. i really vibe off um people's energy like it actually affects me um so as soon as i sense that i'm like right okay gotta get in and out and be gone so <laughs> well that's it too like i mean i think there was like the two times i think that i can like distinctly remember where it worked in my favor to be like you know not even pre-prepared just to be sort of like you know instinctively quick was i remember it was the first time i did a run for glass animals with rolling stone mag and their um label manager whose apartment i'm actually renting he's actually from london he um they had to go somewhere and he had literally no time to spare and i was like i need to get a portrait for the double page double page spread and he's like oh he's like can you do it in five minutes and i was like i can do it in two and I did, and we smashed it out, and he was just like, to this day, he's like, that's one of the best 
you know, moments of having a photographer yes. who, who knows what they're doing, knows what they want, can get it out of a subject so quick that it doesn't sort of like, you know, push the rest of the day, day out of way. But I it, love yeah, that, yeah. I love that. But I remember the last one was like Joey Badass. I did a portrait of him on his birthday and I had this beautiful idea of like what I wanted to do and stuff. And he came in and I think he'd had a few drinks and, and I was like, oh, hi, you know, happy birthday. It's nice to meet you. And I was like, look, here's what I was thinking of doing. And he's like, no, 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 stop. He's like, I'm just going to be me. You be you. And let's get this done. And I was like, all right, cool. And he ended up giving me some stuff really good. But I think I had 10 minutes with him and I think I did it in two. And I was like, all right, I'm done. It's like, and he's like, nice. gave me a glass, you know. Cheers a champagne. He's like, thanks very much. I was like, go and enjoy. Like, that's phenomenal. But yeah, it's just I, like, yeah, I like that kind of story. It's like, don't you don't need an hour with an artist. It's like if I've got something, I've got it. Don't. I don't need to. Keep, I don't need to keep going. Totally. Um, I have to interrupt uh, this session for a minute. Uh, TLD <laughs> has redeemed his channel points for me to change my outfit, which <laughs> I, I need to do. Um, I'm also going to grab a water. So give me two seconds. It oh will only take me two. You, Joe, yes, do it, do it. You guys, I mean, ent entertain oh, yourselves. We're gonna have, we're gonna have, look, we're gonna have a little break. Hang on a sec. I'll put up my little. Hold, hold. Mike. <laughs> Outfit changed, guys. All right. I have changed. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to do 50 sit-ups. <laughs> Good work. I mean, you've got to get your uh, exercise in when you can, you know? God, no, I can't do that. <laughs> Um, Aaron said that was really fast with my outfit change. I actually have like a pile of stuff that I sit next to my computer for this, for these uh, channel redemption points, just in case it happens. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this, pretty fresh. thank you. This is actually, <laughs> an, ad, ad, it's an Adidas collab. I can't remember the, um, collab that it's with, but it's, uh, oh, Whoa. sick. Hang on. I should stand up. Cause it's like <laughs> glamorous guys, guys, guys. Oh. Damn. Right? Are we are we happy? Are we happy with the outfit change? <laughs> it's pretty much. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's uh, Adidas. You guys call it Adidas. I'll find out who the... Um, it's a collab with someone and I can't remember who. Mm. I can't remember. The only brand that I wear. Oh my God, you guys have totally noticed. Uh, everything that I own is uh, Adidas. And I am at some stage going to ask for my own collab. <laughs> Oh there's God. one of my goals there's yeah. one of my... that'd be cool <laughs> imagine, imagine getting your photos printed on like you know jackets or shirts like, that'd be cool. low base just redeemed his but you know what i have to have at least five minutes in this outfit because it's so and then i'll change and then i'll change give me five minutes while we look at and I'll, i have another outfit you guys are uh, uh... My entire wardrobe is black shirts, white shirts, blue shirts, and gray shirts. Same with pants. I don't have any I'm, variation. I have, like, there's my shooting wardrobe, and then there's a... <laughs> can you get a refund? It's okay, Aaron, I'll stay this for, like, five minutes for you. And then we'll go, <laughs> we'll go into another one. Um, 
I wanted to talk to you about the switch, uh, the transition of going from, um, I guess, like a part-time shooter into full-time because, like, uh, there's definitely people... Oh, hi, Dara. Nice to see you in the chat as well. There's definitely people here that I think will really get a lot out of uh, hearing your story because that's probably the most scary thing is making that transition. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. get there, low base. I'm going to change. I just... I'm just going to give Aaron five minutes. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it was definitely... Like, it was something that I thought about for a long time, but it was it was incredibly daunting. Like, to take the step where I would quit a day job that I had that had security. Like, I mean, it was a low-paying warehouse, a like music warehouse job. It wasn't anything spectacular, and I, I loathed it by the end of it. So I think for my own sanity, like, stepping out of... The rigmarole of having a nine to five hell job that I just despised into pursuing the creative outlet full time, whereas like this is a business, this is you know how I'm going to survive, was petrifying. Like it was so difficult to sort of go like, well, I mean, and it's like you know unless you've got you know a hundred sitting in the bank to sit on in case you have a lean month, you're sitting there going like, well, where's the next? <laughs> you're like, where's the next? Um, where's the next job? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, <laughs> Obviously, Go. and obviously too, I think the hardest thing is, and like maybe I feel a little bit um, luckier because you know even as long as five or six years ago, I don't feel it was as saturated. Like I mean, there's a lot of young photographers coming through who would obviously be striving for this to be their full time job, and uh, for me, I never I never wanted it to be my full time job. It was something I did that I enjoyed that I found myself doing more of, or I found more people wanting me to do it for them. So obviously there was something that people wanted from my work. And it was only when I got a few good clients and would found out, you know, I could get $50 here, $100 here, $200 here, $500 here, $1,000 here. You slowly get to that point where you're like, okay, this extra income is good. Is it enough to live off? Mm -hmm. And I think it was job satisfaction for me that I just was so unhappy in life. And I just didn't, I was drinking way too much and doing stupid things and I just was like I gotta change something so I took a leap and I was like you know what if it doesn't work it doesn't work but I remember I quit and literally I think a week and a half later I was on tour in America for three months and that was awesome but I came back with the biggest fear of thinking I've been gone for three months no one's gonna know no one's gonna remember like who's gonna want to hire me and I remember the second I stepped off the plane I think I was about home for about 24 hours and then I got this big corporate job come through from a friend of mine who worked for a liquor company and I was just like, oh, okay, I mean, that'll tide me over for a month. And then I was like, so I did that and then all of a sudden it became like something else popped up. So it was very fortuitous to have people contact me for work, but it was definitely, it's it's incredibly hard. Like having obviously, a, a, you know, money behind you for savings is is going to be beneficial for a lot of uh, a lot of people stepping up into that full time job, but it's um, yeah, it's it was fucking scary, man. Like really scary, you know, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I obviously now we're in such weird times. Like, who knows when we're going to shoot another show? But yeah, um, but I, I definitely feel like when you take that leap of faith, um, I don't know, like things. Like, I don't know if they fall, they seem to fall into place. So they certainly did for me. Yeah. Uh, like you just, um, just went like those times where you're just like, oh my God, I'm never going to get another phone call. And yeah. it just, something really amazing happens. <laughs> that you're off again, I mean, you know? and I don't want to sound defeatist and glass half empty, but in the same fashion, you think about the elites of, say, let's just put it into perspective and say sports stars. You think about everyone who's playing AFL or rugby league or whatever it is. For every player you see on that pitch, there's probably 500 people who didn't make it, who tried yeah. but didn't make it. There's going to be a lot of people who wanted it, who just couldn't get it, whether it be through injury, through passion, or whatever it was, something waned. And I, I definitely believe that people end up in the place that they're meant to. You know, yes. and I might, you know, I might not be here for much longer. I might decide that it's time for me to pack up and or move down a different avenue. But I mean, yeah, it's just. I think it's very. It's, I think having that fatalist viewpoint of we'll end up where we're meant to, and you know, to, like yeah. I said. And I mean, I know there's a lot, there's one very, very talented photographer based in Sydney who I met at a very young age who was very impatient. 
It's all he wanted was this to be his life's job. It's like, I want this to be my career. I want to live off. And I was like, just have fun. Like, learn yeah. to love what you do and it will come. It will come, and it, yeah. And it, and it yeah. did. It took him a few years. But, you know, once he got there, I was like, see, you didn't need it when you were 18 years old, dude. You're 23 or 24 now. And it's like, yeah. you've waited. And it's like, yeah, it's having also, the patience. The patience and also, like, like it will not happen overnight. Like, it, mm. it just won't. Like, you ha- like how many oh, – I don't even know how many shows I shot before anyone, like, even gave a shit, you know? Like, you just, like – grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding just for so long and then at oh, one point yeah. it just clicks you know well i mean like how many shows have we shot for free how many times have you like oh. paid for flights to go to another city to shoot something that you just really wanted to do you know like yeah. i mean i did that for god like it took me what well, well, i mean i wouldn't say i started shoot. i started shooting 2003 but probably would have been around 2008 2009 was when i got really really full on but even then it took what's that six or seven years before I could yeah. even get to a stage where I was like, you know what? I can live off this. And I mean, I don't live, you know, I'm not, I don't have any money, like <laughs> I'm not rich, but you know, it took a long time, but that the seven or eight years of hard work of free stuff of late nights of touring continuously, like that never paid any money. It was like, I did it because I love to do it. And it got to that stage where I was like, you know, okay, life's going to pay you back in this way. And you know, yeah. Yes, totally. Well, even just the freedom of like, this is a thing. It's like, I don't think there's any music photographers that I know that are rich, especially now. They might have been back in the day where they got paid $20,000 for an assignment. That doesn't happen anymore. But um, what I talk to people that want to make this transition is it's the freedom. It's actually the quality of life over, um, you know, the millions of dollars. And I would personally prefer to have the freedom to wake up whenever I like and to choose to do the assignments that I want to do to genuinely love the people that I'm working with over having some hype. I, I work, I walked away from, you know, a three figure salary to do this. And the first year oh. I earned uh, like $18,000 because I, I believe that this is what I wanted to do. So, um, it, and I've never, ever been happier than, you know, I, COVID's weird, but like last year was like my best year. Like I was living, wow. I was living the dream. So like, Yes, three, three figures. <laughs> wow. Wait, what did you do before this? I don't even know. Have you told me? Uh, the, the, the job that I did, um, like the corporate job that I did, I was actually working um, working in like an events corporate, corporate mm. management thing. And then I also worked in film, uh, which paid really, really well, like the uh, production company. Um, oh, cool. It's like they pay stupid money for, at the time, me to do mm. not very much. So... But I worked really long hours, so um, the quality wow. of life was like, <laughs> yeah, but, no, um... definitely not five hundred thousand, Betty. <laughs> definitely not, definitely, definitely not five hundred. <laughs> but that's what I mean. And sometimes you think about what it's like for us, and people see what we do as a job, and they go, "My God, you're living the dream." I'm like, I'm living a life that could be a dream to someone else. It's not always a dream for me. Like you know, I don't. I mean, I think I worked out before COVID hit. In the last two years, I was flying on average between 80 to 90 times a year. That yeah. was like every every four days, roughly, I worked out that I was on a flight. Like it was. Yes, wow. It, it was incredibly draining. Like it's yeah. not easy. And there are times where it's like, I just want to stay home with my partner. Or it's like, your friends are going out on a Friday night. They're like, well, I'm in Darwin or wherever. You know, it's like, you're just, this is your job. So like it does have its perks, but it does have its pitfalls. Like, yeah. The grass isn't always greener, so That's it's so just, true. yeah. And it's hard because I mean, like a transient lifestyle has suited me my whole life. I've always grown up on the road. Like I lived in other countries. I traveled a lot as a child. You know, it's just, I'm fine with that, but yes. it's, it does take its toll. I mean, man, even now, like I said, like I've been exercising every day for like three weeks and I've barely lost a single like <laughs> bit of weight. Cause I'm just like, ah, oh, the body at 36 is just not what it is at 26. Yes, that's uh, try being forty-one. I, I feel you one hundred percent. Yeah, but you don't look anything like you don't. You, you, don't look, you look like a thirty-one. <laughs> I hide it. Um, I need to do another outfit change because no. uh, low well, base anyone, redeem. Give me two seconds. Yeah, people can ask some questions if they. Yeah, ask me. questions in the chat. Yeah, give me some questions. Yes, Benny, what have you got? <laughs> I'm not good enough to do that yet. <laughs> Never used a Sony camera. Um, I do prefer black and white over color. 
uh, I always have done. My favorite photographers, the, the, the photographers whose works I've always been drawn to were always, always shot in black and white. It was always, <laughs> sorry, I just saw a photo. I saw you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, the reason I love black and white more is I, I, my eye gets drawn to sort of contrast and lines a lot more. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's different to other people, but I just find because life is in color, for me, black and white has always kind of shown the flip side reversal of what it is to sort of, you know, I, I, I just, I, I, I think it's something that for me works better. Like I, I like tones more. I think it's just... Yeah, I mean, if I could just shoot everything in black and white and on film, I probably would. Yeah, it's definitely your vibe, isn't it? Like, well, that's how I started. Like, I, yeah. you know, like, the first time I picked up a camera was film. Like, I didn't, I shot film for eight years before I bought a digital camera. And so it was always something that I was familiar with, something that I learned to use, something that I was comfortable yeah. using. And that's why I went back to it after, you know, plowing through years of digital work. I was just, I'd lost that eye and I lost that patience. So I was like, I need to get that back and back. film, yeah, film train me again. Uh, Brian's asking why can't you just shoot um, black and white film, I guess. Well, I can. Like, I've got about two or three hundred rolls in the fridge that I've been stockpiling for so long mm. that I like to use. And it's all black and white because I develop everything at home. So I do all my own developing. But um, unfortunately, a lot of clients don't want to see everything in black and white. Can you <laughs> just, I'm just looking at myself on the screen. Can you imagine yeah. if, if nobody's ever seen the stream before and they walk in on this? They'd be like, why is a cowboy interviewing what? Eve? That just made me crack up just thinking the like, first time anyone's ever seen this stream <laughs> is me wearing this ridiculous outfit. But, is that a puffy uh, jacket? It is actually a puffer. It's actually a <laughs> crop, crop puffer jacket, guys. <laughs> You guys had no idea how how deep my wardrobe rolls and the ridiculous <laughs> I, ridiculous items that I will pull. Yes. What did yeah, Missy Elliott. Oh, can't say, say, say the rain. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, legit, legit. Oh my god, it's always hip hop vibes to me. My hair is like getting caught. Um, uh, one of the questions I wanted to ask you was like um, going through the tough times, I think, like, how do you get your confidence back? Because um, I remember quite a specific time when I was actually away. Uh, I was away and you were, you messaged me and you were in like, not a, not a great kind of headspace. And you said you wanted to quit. Mm. And I just, I remember just like begging you not to quit. <laughs> oh um, my God, yeah. But like, I guess the reason that I want to touch on that is like, people, people ask me about this stuff all the time. And I think it's really great to get the perspective of like, everybody feels like this at some point. And how do you bounce back from that and keep going? I guess that that's really my question. Well, I think, you know, deep down, I think if you get to the crux of, you know, with that sort of feeling of, you know, depression or the feeling of, you know, just wanting to quit everything. I think it doesn't always stem from what it is that you want to quit or give up. Like for me, mm -hmm. what, wanting to quit photography is something that I could probably go through daily if I think about it, but it's not photography that I want to quit. It's other parts of my life that I need to fix. Yeah. So um, whether or not that's, you know, start doing things like yoga or Pilates or just like even small stuff, like just finding ways that sort of can either release or get rid of that, the negativity. So, I mean, for one thing is like, you know, eating better, exercising, you know, mm. small stuff that you just take for granted. You don't really think about you like, you know, cause I mean, I had happily, I'd happily eat macros every day if I could, but you know, it's like. And it's, also you have full control over those things as well. Like I'm really big on that stuff. Like I think it's yeah. really, 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 really important. I think so too. And it's just like, you know, when, when you're in a better headspace, when you feel like life is better or you're feeling better about yourself, you know, everything becomes that much more magnified. It's like, you know, if I've had no sleep or, um, you know, not like, or something, you know, bad has happened or I've, whatever it is, if I put, pick up the camera and I head out, it's not, I'm not going to get the same results as if I'm feeling more positive about myself. So I knew deep down that every time I've said I've wanted to quit photography, it's not because I hate photography, it's because I've hated something inside me. That's been the biggest thing. Uh, that's 
pretty um, I think you've touched on something really important there I think there's a lot of people that wouldn't admit that but that's actually a really big driving force in a lot of the, the stuff um, yeah and it just it just manifests in other ways so and that's it and I mean sometimes it could be something as serious and as jealousy you know or you know just feeling entitled like you know I've definitely gone through the ego complex of feeling like I should have been there or I should have got that that someone else got and you know that was me learning to put me in my own place but it was you know it's not easy to admit when you're feeling down or you're feeling crap or you're you know you're unhappy with your work because for a lot of photographers over time it becomes so it's like riding a bike or you know it's become so trained that you put yourself in the pit and you know exactly what you're doing instinctively like you know how to take a photo you know what looks good you know what feels good you know what good moments are so it's not like you forget how to do something, but it's just, you know, it's it's sometimes hard to look at what you do and see the value in it. Like like I said earlier, like I've looked at my work over and over for so long that I just became bored of it. I'm like, this sucks. This is boring. Yeah. This is crap. You know, when I took it at the time, I obviously thought it was good, but it's looking at your work with a different perspective. So I think at the end of the day, yeah, it's stuff that's been inside me that has stopped me or has pushed me in ways that I have not wanted to be. So, and, that, and unfortunately that has come out in elements of my work and personality, which has been identified to me and has, I've worked on it in the last couple of years, which has been super helpful because if I was the person I was two or three years ago, I probably wouldn't work in this industry just for being a bit of a shit, really. Like, you know, it's, it's not easy to admit when you have had an ego or you felt entitled or you have belittled others or you've gone to a place where you felt like you're better. Like, I don't want to feel like I'm better than anyone else. Like, I don't have any more right to be somewhere than someone else does, so. Totally. Yeah. yeah it, um, lots of lots of love in the chat for you opening up at the moment. This is really, really awesome. Um, I really resonate with so much of what you said. I've definitely gone through those moments in the past and I've, I've personally learned to flip those emotions when I feel them. And, um, you know, let's say somebody gets a job that I would have really loved to do hmm. and in the past I would have been like well, why didn't I get that job yeah um, and now I've turned that into both being motivated and like just being better like just be better that's how I see it now like yeah, you didn't get I, it be better and, and so it just yeah drives me you know in a, I, think, in a... I think too obviously another key point that I learned was not only to let go of that sort of negativity and jealousy towards other people but then celebrate what they did yes you know, really actually, yeah. you know, look, look at someone who's joined like the official photography team over me or whatever it is, or someone who got to do a tour or shoot a show that I wanted that I didn't get. And then you see the work and you're like, instead of looking and saying, well, oh, I wouldn't have shot like that. Or I would have done better than that. You're just looking to go, you know what? Pay it for like, you know, that's good. That shot is great. Look at that. Look what they did. Like, yeah. you know, it's... Yes. I think genuinely celebrating people's wins is such a big thing. Like I'm really, really massive on that. Like being really supportive of other people. Um, is is super important. Um, it's I think it's also noticed and appreciated, and I don't know. I'm just a big fan of like just giving all of the love and the celebration where where possible. So, well, I think at the end of the day, if you sort of pit yourself against everyone else, it divides us. It divides you. It divides everyone else from you. And no one wants to be isolated. Like if, no, if there were no other photographers around, and you were just shooting everything yourself, like that's fine, but as long as you're doing it for yourself, like be, be in competition with you. You don't need to worry about what the person next to you is shooting or what they're shooting with, how long they've been shooting or what they're shooting for or what access they've got. Like, you know, challenge you, challenge yourself, make sure that you're doing this because you want to do it. Like, there's nothing worse than comparing yourself to others. Like, I don't need to compare myself to other photographers. I envy other people's work because I think, damn, that's great. But yeah. to, there's no point comparing. It's like, if I'm going to be trying to emulate or better you. I'm not doing it for me, then it becomes a sport. It becomes too yes. competitive to the point where you lose artistic creativity, you lose that vision, and it's just not worth it for me. Yes, um, I need to say what up to Frederick in the chat. I am so sorry about this outfit. The chat made me change twice today, uh, and each time needed to be a little bit more glamorous. So this is, this is where we're at today. Uh, I didn't start the stream like this, just so you know. Um, uh, there's been some really great comments and love for your openness here, Ian. So I really appreciate that. Um, Brian said you learn more by paying attention to what you admire about someone's work rather uh, other than you do paying attention to why you're better, which I think is yeah. a really great comment. 
Um, Rush said for me, other people's happiness is so contagious that I get genuinely happy for them. I completely agree with that. That is me, 100%. Unless it's after like three days of working 15 hours at the festival and then that stage, I'm just like, if you're too happy, don't be around me. I'm too tired for this. I do? Yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it's, but it's like, it's the reason why I like so many different photographers for so many different reasons. You know, I don't, you know, yeah. I have a lot of different books by a lot of different photographers whose work I would never try to emulate or shoot, but I find, you know, some kind of comfort in their work. Like it's, it's nice to appreciate others' work. Um, I've just been asked to change my outfit again. So. <laughs> Go for it. I'll do another. If anyone's got any more questions. Yes, do a question. <laughs> i got to find something else in the wardrobe. Oh, don't you worry, guys. I will rise to the occasion. Welcome to Cub the FM. Uh, I'm changing outfits again. <laughs> I'll be back. Give me some more questions. <laughs> I can't help but be optimistic. Oh, I wish I had that. Hello, Parks. Favorite tattoo? Oh, God. Um, I have this one, which is my Liverpool Football Club tattoo. I don't know if you can see that. It says, you'll never walk alone. I've been a tragic Liverpool fan since the age of four. Uh, but, yeah, that's probably my favorite. Have I ever shot fish? No. The closest was Dave Matthews, if that's a comparison. Hey, lady, hope you're great. Love you to a husband. Hello, Brayden. <laughs> what up, fam? Tottenham all the way. I'm sorry, Midnight Rush TV. I have no beef with Tottenham. Yeah, I have. Digging the long hair, Dan. Yes, I know. I haven't been to a... These I'm are gonna... a bit reflective, man. So I can take these off. I love the questions that you're getting. Yeah. Oh, Thomas. Hello, Tom. Uh, what up to the two new people? There's, oh, hang on. <laughs> Tanya's just trying to call me on FaceTime while I'm streaming. Tanya. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. Uh, yes, guys, I have got the, the uh, faux fur out for you. <laughs> Harris, that one just arrived. Someone's uh, coming. Ah, awesome, <laughs> awesome. Uh, <laughs> Somebody else. Oh, what just happened? I don't know. <laughs> Something, a notification went off, but I don't know what it is. Oh, we're getting another raid. <laughs> we're getting another raid from Mali. <laughs> what up, Mali? So nice to see you here, Mali. You have, uh, you guys are witnessing the fourth outfit change that's been redeemed today. We're up to fur. I don't know if we can top fur, though. Let's... I mean, I do have other furs, so... <laughs> Giselle is here. Nice to see you here. Thank you so much for the raid. Thanks for the follow, Andrew. Really appreciate it. Um, we're talking to Ian. Uh, that's <laughs> We're talking to Ian Laidlaw today. He's an amazing music photographer who's just opened up about some really amazing stuff, which has been really cool. Um, somebody's just asked, Britt has said, please talk about Celine Dion. Okay, when you talk about, like, gigs that... I won't say I was jealous because I, re I really just don't feel that feeling anymore. Like, I am genuinely happy for everybody. There was a little bit of, like, oh, <laughs> shit, that would have been a really good gig. But I was so happy for you. And, by the way, you absolutely killed that gig when you shot, mm. you shot for Celine uh, on her last Australian tour. Do you want to talk yeah. about that? Uh, I'll have to double check the contract because it was pretty strict. But uh, no, it was. It was. Um, if you talk yeah. positive, it's fine. I've got one with yeah. um, Lauren Hill as well. Just say positive. No, no, I want to ask you about that. <laughs> um, no, the Celine one was really. It was interesting because I remember when the record label came through, they were like, "Hey, like, would you be interested? Can you submit some sort of work in this sort of styling?" And I remember I sort of was going, "Oh shit, I, haven't, I can't really think of sort of that sort of pop." or well, that sort of stadium level of artist that I'd worked closely with before. Like, you know, I'd had shot like Rihanna, Taylor Swift and that sort of Jennifer Lopez and stuff. Yeah. And I remember thinking like, all right, well, I'll just kind of put these sort of images and just sort of see, cause there was no brief of what she was expecting, but um, they came back and they said, okay, like how much would a day rate be? And I just was like, this woman has, money would be no object. So I was like, I'm just going to charge to the roof. Yeah. And I was like, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. And I remember I half did the tour with Brian Purnell, who worked for Mushroom, who was the pub, uh, who was the record label she's on. Um, and 
uh, I remember I was just like, I'm just going to quote as stupidly high as humanly possible. And if I don't get it, I don't get it. But I came back and I was like, that's fine. And I was like, <laughs> cool. All right. I love when that happens. That's the best. Well, it's amazing how much your your mental side shifts when someone's paying you $200 for a photo and someone's paying you like $2,000 or $20,000. It's just like, you know, yeah. it's, it's weird the dynamic of how your brain works. But I remember I got the job and I did Brisbane and Perth with her. She did two, two Brisbane shows and one Perth show. And it was... The most surreal week, of, it was over a week, so it was the most surreal week of my life. I just remember being like, all right, it's Celine Dion. I've met a lot of people in my life. I've photographed a lot of people. I never really want to be nervous or, like I've never been intimidated by working with clients, like whoever it is, it doesn't matter. Like, um, but I remember just went to the suite to meet her in Melbourne, met all the crew, they're all super lovely. She came out, I was just like, okay, this is Celine Dion. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a oh. next it's like next level, isn't it? It's like there's famous and then there's Celine Dion. <laughs> but it's a, yeah, I mean I've met a few people in my life where you just kinda of have to double take. You know, you look at yeah. them and you go, You are yeah. Yeah. the theme song from Titanic, correct? Yeah, 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 exactly. Right yeah. Um uh, yeah. but I think once you get past that initial meeting with people, it became very much like just another human. Yeah. This is another human. She's just very you know, she had a kids in town, like, you know, we flew private jets everywhere, which was insane. Like it was, um, it was, I was very respectful in the beginning, obviously. And I kind of worked out a feeling of like, what would you like me to do? Where can I go? Where can't I go? When do you need time off? Like, when do you want me to bring the camera up? When do you want me to put it down? And I still remember this is my favorite quote I think I've ever been told by any artist. And it's still, it still like sits really well with me this day. But I remember being like, oh, like just, if you want to let me know when I can and can't shoot. And she looked at me dead in the eyes and she's just like, if I can't hear the camera, you're not doing your job. And I was like, beautiful. <laughs> click, 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 yeah. click, 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 click. <laughs> That's what it was. It was just like constant. She's like, anywhere, anywhere you like oh, to go. Oh, like, I love that. That's and amazing. I, That's and amazing. I remember we were at the uh, Brisbane Entertainment Center, I think, and there were a few a few friends of mine from Brisbane were there and they were shooting and it was all like, they were front of house. And I remember the first live show, I was like, well, like where, where would it be okay to go? Or where would you prefer that I not go? And she's like, if you want to come out behind me, on stage at any moment, feel free. So I remember in between the seven or eight costume changes, you know, when uh, she had the phones in the air and was just about to see my heart will go on, I literally walked out two feet from her in the middle of the stage in front of 20,000 people and just shot it like like there was no one else around. Wow. And it was that's so it, cool. That's such and a I mean, cool story. I love that. To have an artist of that level and of that fame be so open to access and trust with someone she's just met. To me, that was a really beautiful sign of how she appreciates, you know, being documented and how the images, you know, how she, and she, they basically told me she has like a warehouse of like terabytes of like documents of her, like she's documented her whole life. Wow. So, That's so, so, so cool. Yeah. Um, just, yeah. yeah. Just very, very, very down to earth, very easy to get along with. But at the same time, I remember, being on like, and this is, I mean, I don't want to sound like a wanker when I say this, but flying back on the private jet, I remember just, <laughs> I remember giggling. Bruh, I, you yeah. sent me that selfie, you sent me that selfie from the private jet, and I was like, fuck you, but also amazing, but fuck you, amazing. <laughs> it was like so cool. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just, I remember giggling. Like, best talking. thing ever, best thing ever. And amazing, so cool, so cool. And it's just like, I remember thinking to myself, I was like, this is so weird. And I remember her stylist was like, are you, are you okay? And I was like, yeah. I was like, is this your real life? Is this your every day? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, this is insane. Like, yeah. this is, this is like fame for me has never been a motivator. I've never been driven by it. Yeah. I don't ever want to be famous. I don't care about being recognized. But I just remember thinking like, this is your life. Like, yeah, it's pretty full on. It's insane to me. Like, it just was so, like, this is polar opposite of everything that I could ever probably expect to do in life. And it was yeah. great. Like, it, it was a weird flip thing, but that was just, it was just incredibly surreal to look at this yeah. group of, like, she had a touring entourage of 130 people, and there was only eight in her nucleus that were allowed to go on the plane. Yeah. You know, which showed the magnitude of her touring. But yeah. It was just weird. I like, think that's also, like, you know, a being involved with an artist on the level that I am now, I think that's really important to have that, that nucleus as well. Like they're, they're the people, they're your family. Like they're the people that keep, they would keep her really grounded and, and feel like, you know, there's people that genuinely care about her all the time around her. So yeah. I think it's a really and cool I mean, thing. 
and I mean, I guess with Rule too, he's so young and upcoming. Like, you know, he's got, you know, he's. It's not like he's been around for twenty five plus years and got hardened through. You know, this he's a, he's at a very impressionable age still. I, I think, like, you know, yeah, the totally. world is still opening up very, very, very big for him, and that's fantastic. Like, all success, all power to him. Like, yeah. But having but yeah. Like, you and Joel and stuff as having like that media content between what he does and you know what you guys do is just. It's it's invaluable. Like you'll never you'll never look back and go like oh I'm you know oh I should have taken those with me. Like yeah, well I hope not. <laughs> but no, it, is, well, I mean, it is very much a family. Like um, and also when his fa his actual family can't be with him, then like they know that you know we always have his best interests um, at the center yeah, yeah. at the center of everything that we do. Yeah, I mean, I don't, is he is he over eighteen? I don't know. Not yet. Um, okay, right. So... <laughs> not long though. Not long. A couple of months. End an, end, an, end of next month, so watch out. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I hear stories like that, and I just think to myself, like, Jesus Christ, I've wasted so much of my life. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> already seeing the seeing what he's done at seventeen is quite wild. Just like, yeah, it's pretty phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But um, okay, I've got one last question for you. If anybody else has any questions in the chat, chuck them in now. Um, but something that uh, on thanks, low base. Thanks for popping in. Really appreciate it. Great to have you here as always. Um, one thing that people always really like to talk about is uh, what gear do you shoot with? What's your go-to uh, camera and lenses for when you're shooting? Mm. Well, I've always been a Nikon man for film Woo! and digital. Um, I still have an old F5 that I've had for, I think it got given to me in like 2002, maybe. So yeah, this old Nikon F5 camera, it's just a machine. It's an absolute tank. I've taken it in to be serviced once and the lady's like, how many times has this been serviced or cleaned? And I was like, none. And she's Never. like, and after this, you probably, and after this, you probably won't have to worry about it. Like it's just, it's just, uh, yeah, it's a beast. But I mean, like yeah. for me, I shoot a lot of, of, like all my film stuff is all on Nikon film as well mm -hmm. but um like i've got my old Hasselblad that i love um and i just recently bought a 645 back for that which is cool so is um, that um 35 millimeter or me uh, medium format the that's what yeah it's medium format so oh, it's yes. 120 so it shoots six by six but i just bought a, a, a new back for it which shoots six four five so oh. not so square so i really just nice. um i just shot some stuff in medium format Mm. Uh, that will hopefully be seen soon. Uh, nice. So, yes, I have absolutely fallen in love and will definitely... I borrowed my friend Ollie's uh, camera, but I think I'll think I'll be needing to get one of those. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, the, the good thing yeah. about the hustle, but it doesn't take batteries, you know, you can... I mean, it's a little bit cumbersome, but I mean, it's not as much as others. Yeah, oh, actually, yeah, it actually fit into my um, my camera bag pretty nicely, actually. The thing that it really slowed me down because I'm an overshooter. And yeah. I it made me... I was so, so nervous, like, because it was a really big deal that I was shooting. Um, and I shot, I think, seven rolls of film, both colour and black and white. And I think only two photos didn't work out. So like I was really, 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 question. really taking my time. Like really, just like I gotta nail this. So, um, but that's how nervous I was. I was like, I was like, oh god, just if if three of these photos turn out, I'll be stoked. And they ended up like pretty much all being awesome. So very cool. But but they're I mean they're beautiful. Like they're just such nice. They are beautiful. Such it's, nice cameras. And just um, the the. I can't even, the, yeah, something untangible, like, that you can't really explain about the quality of the photograph. It's just something that, it's indescribable to me. I don't have the words. I can't articulate it properly, but it's, uh, I'm yeah. definitely hooked and I definitely will be shooting more. So <laughs> I'm very excited I mean, about that. But I mean, it's also a good way to slow down your brain. Like, you know, you think about digital cameras these days, the low light capabilities, the fast lenses, it's, it's almost, it's almost harder to fail you know like you can shoot so easily and you know pull something out of it like you know with film it became part of going like well i have to actually think about this like i've got a certain amount of frames or i've got a certain speed film like i can't go from 100 iso to 6400 you know i have what i have and it's like yeah yeah you know work, working with film is uh definitely for, well i mean for me it's always helped with my creative process and i mean i think if i could just shoot film i probably would yeah there's been um 
Ch uh, Peter said finding a challenge to use when my subject doesn't want to sit still. That'd be very hard for you, Peter, shooting mostly yeah. animals. Uh, Megan said manual focus is so difficult. I really, yeah. really, really struggled to understand like where exactly that point of focus was. Like it just, yeah, I was taking so long, but um, evidently yeah. I did nail it. So, which is good, but I That's think, perfect. yeah, it, it does slow you down and, and you really take your time on those. Those Especially shots. with portraits, you know, like if you're working with an artist and there's no like real time frame where yeah, you can just no like, you rush. Know, yeah, I mean, stuff yeah. like that really, yeah. And I mean, also, too, there's no light, a lot of them don't have light meters, you know, so yeah. it's like, yeah, you sit there and you have to actually, like, you know, it's like understanding how light works is, yeah, uh, totally. I think, something that a lot of photographers don't kind of well, take. It was, the first, well, yeah. it was the first time I used a light meter in my entire life. I was like, well, this is fun. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> get, get the little, a little pocket phone one out and like, and that it's, works really well as well. Well, yeah, tools. I mean, but it's funny how you can kind of work it out already through, you know, your settings. If you shoot manual, if you're shooting a live show, you shoot manually. You know, it's you, you kind of know what sort of aperture, what ISO, and what kind yeah. of shutter speed can can get something. To, obviously, depending on the light, but you know, you light, can just yeah. yeah, you just relate that back to you know shooting something that you don't have to worry about running back and forth. Unfortunately, Peter's might bite him. But yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Uh, Patty said he's got the Pentax uh, six by seven, which is real fun. That's great. Good. Giselle said she's picking up. Uh, I'm assuming some film as well, which is very cool. Uh, you you struggle with uh, you struggle with the eliteness of film sometimes. Kiki, I tell you what, um, I was the oh, same. I will tell you what broke that for me uh, was a photographer that told me when I'm shooting my digital stuff, just copy the settings and just take a shot in film and that's how I started so I would just like every every shoot that I did I'd look at my settings on my digital camera I would transfer it to the film and go oh okay this is what my settings need to be because I know on my digital camera that's exposed right and it was like a cheat way of getting me into film when I was really terrified of it and it changed my life and now it's like I'm really comfortable shooting it but it really worked for me to get past that Oh, I don't understand. I can't do this. I don't know light meters. Um, I just kind of cheated my way. But also, but also too, there are like the, there is that sort of eliteness to people who are like you know pure analog photographers. It's like oh, yeah, just, because, just, yeah. just because it's taken on film doesn't make it better. No, right? I completely agree. I hate that stuff. That's like yeah. it's um, and and when I'm talking about like um, being un unable to describe stuff as well, like there is. Um, there is something about film that I think you can't replicate, but like it will never replace what I do in the, it just won't be able to, like it's just realistic no. from a business perspective. <laughs> well, no, well you think about what life is like now with social media, with instant, you know, there's an instant nature that we all sort of have been pushed into now with, you know, images everywhere in all formats of, you know, you think about how, you know, media worked, you know, 20, 30 years ago, like, you know, like, you know, street photographers, press photographers, newspaper photographers had to like go and shoot, run back and they'd have people in a yeah. dark room developing and then you yeah. know, scanning, enlarging, printing. Totally. You know, it doesn't exist anymore. Exactly. Um, are there any last questions? Otherwise we shall let Ian have the rest of the afternoon. Is it still nice outside? Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, definitely going for a walk. Oh my God. Yeah. That's going to happen soon, guys. Um, it's been so lovely chatting to you. Um, it's been really nice to see your face, which I haven't seen in forever. And it's really right. nice to see your really long locks that look um, really glamorous. <laughs> well, I don't know how much they'll grow, but yeah. I just, no, uh... they're great. I'm just looking at your photos that you did. Um, you started doing that um, ah, yes. that alphabetical order sharing photos, yeah. which was such a good idea. I think you should definitely continue that, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I probably will. It's just, I think the reason I got up to a certain letter and stopped was not because I didn't have anything to post after it. was just, I think when the depression waves kind of kick in and I just yeah. kind of lost all passion for it, I was like, I just fucking don't care anymore. Yeah. Like, does anyone care? Like, yeah, does anyone like, care? That's the like, thing. But that's the I... thing. It's like, but that's what it's turned into. It's got to the point where I have to worry now, does anyone give a shit about what I do? It's like, why am I, Why do I need validation? It's like, if I want to post something, I should post, post something. something. I just... Yeah, you have to totally get out of that. It's, yeah. And I, I, dude, I've lost so many followers because my followers were, a lot of them are rule fans and I'm posting yeah. no rule content. I'm literally losing hundreds of followers a week. So like, does anyone care? Like that definitely comes up all the time. But just like post because you want to post and because you like it. Like that's the way yeah. that I... I have to see it now, you know. 
Yeah, exactly right. I mean, like, the reason I started this alphabetical archive thing was because I obviously have a plethora of, I don't even know how much content I've got. It's bullshit. Yeah. I the people thinking, have never seen before. Yeah, and that, I, mean, yeah. I actually had a bit of an underlying theme behind it, which was all live, all international, all unseen. That was yeah. my whole project. So, like, that image of the horrors had never been shown. Yeah. And it's just stuff that sat on my hard drive. And so I, I thought to myself, I was like, well, I might as well start, you know, going back and posting stuff because I, uh, you know, it's stuff that I, I like that I probably overlooked. And so all these images were shots that I hadn't even edited they were just sitting there and I was like fuck like how did I miss that one you know you just go back and sometimes you find a shot that you didn't even know that you'd taken you were like oh wow yeah like, totally why yeah like why why did I select this shot over this shot like you know yeah so it's, that's that was the whole premise of it I mean I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll probably go back to it but yeah it's just uh yeah it's it's interesting to look back retrospectively now because I think the best advice I ever had from an editor for a magazine I worked for I used to shoot really tight like, you know, really, really, really like oh, yeah. close shots, like yep. all 70 to 200. You know, I love to like shallow depth of field. I thought it was so cool. And I remember like I had an editor once who just like said, your photos are good, but you know what you could do? And I was like, how dare you tell me? Like, I know how <laughs> to take a photo. Like, how like, dare you? Yeah. He's like, if you, if you, if you pan it out, he's like, you know, you can crop in. And I was like, oh, yes, fuck. shoot yes. wider, shoot wider. Love it. Like, yeah. Beautiful perspective. Um, Giving it almost gives you that perspective of what it's like to be there. I think when you're a bit wider, so I really, I really like shooting that wider stuff as well. Well, I think the human eye sees it like what 22 or 23 degrees or 20 or 23 20, millimeter. Yeah, I think it's something. between 24 and 28 or somewhere around there. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's what your peripherals see anyway. So yeah. for me, it's kind of like, and I mean, I, you know, I've learned to love negative space more and more now. So it's kind of cool to see the transition in. You know, I think it's great to see transition in everyone's work, just seeing how they evolve. You know, like where they go to, where they've come from, and just watching people get better or just find their own sort of sense of style. Like it's nice. I love that. I love that. Yeah. So 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 good. Um, yeah. well, we're going to let you go. Is there, guys, is there anyone, I need to just check this, hang on, let me pop, I'm going to find if there's anyone that we can raid, um, uh, let me check, um, really, really <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing to have you here today, and lo lovely, lovely chatting, yeah, is he going to join the crew, um, he's already part of the crew, Ian's been, yeah. Ian's been in the chat before, guys, I have. um, Vegan Karu. I used you as a music film photographer reference. Oh, that's really nice. Thank you. Ah, uh, that's so cool. Oh, uh, Josh is online. We could definitely raid Josh again. Um, he's just chatting as well. He's not playing games, so that could be fun. He's one of my faves. Uh, we'll go raid Josh. I just wanted to say, oh, hey, Six. You just missed the, uh, we're at the end of, end of the chat. Um, I just wanted to say something to all of the crew. Um, and actually, this is actually very, very relevant to Six. Um, there's been some amazing stuff happening this week. Like, uh, this crew, if I rally the troops and ask the crew to come over and support, you guys have been so amazing supporting other streamers and following them and getting them to goals that they need to, to get to. And I, I love this so much. And I really want to continue us being the community that can go to other people's streams, let them know that we're there, let them know drop the crew emotes, let's show them love. Like this is a really loving community. I really want us to be the most supportive. So let's continue to do that. It makes me so happy when you guys, um, when you guys do that. So yeah, let's, uh, so Chloe that I'm going to do that tomorrow. Um, oh, thank you so much for gifting that, uh, for continue your gifted sub six. That's awesome. Uh, Chloe, after my interview tomorrow, I'm doing an interview with soy. That's going to be at 10 a.m. my time, so a little bit earlier. Um, I'm going to do a stream at the end of that, which will be showing uh, some inspo for the emotion challenge this week. And it will also be editing a FaceTime shoot that I did this morning with Bats. So we're going to do that tomorrow. Um, and an interview with you tomorrow. Yes, I'm doing an interview with um, Frederick from This Week in Photo, uh, a um, podcast, I believe. So... Uh, that will be tomorrow at 2 p.m., I think. So, yeah. Uh, it's not a photo of Matt Thickey. It's a photo of Bats, who was in the chat today. So, <laughs> we did a FaceTime shoot this morning, Ian. Needed Ooh, to get creative. So, it went really well. It was really fun. I've actually never done one of those. I'm interested to know how they work. Like, do you, do you take 
your camera and take a photo of the screen or do you screenshot with your no. laptop? Like No, neither of those things. So you call them, yeah, it has to be on FaceTime. So call them yep. like via your mm -hmm. phone, phone numbers, it has to be FaceTime. Okay. And so if you've both got the latest iOS on Apple phones, there's a take photo option. Mm. And what, what it what it actually does is it takes a photo with the other person's camera at the other end and it sends you the file. So wow. I don't know I don't know if you've seen the ones that I've done, but they look they're they're not screenshots, they're actual photos. Even if the yeah. wi even if the Wi Fi is not great, it'll work. I've che I've tested this out, so Because I know the ones, like I saw the ones you did with Rule. They were really yeah. cool. Like but I'm thinking so what, do you like does the subject have to hold it in certain Yeah, ways? I've done I've done it two ways. I've done it with Rule, I had his sister holding the yeah. phone. And so I would direct and, and same today I actually we use Tanya's boyfriend. Um so he was my he was basically the tripod holding my I would say up, down, whatever, and then I would direct Tanya. So it's like you it wow. it really it's interesting because you have to kind of double direct, but it's fun. It's really cool. You should definitely try it. Um, but had, did you feel like it was weird, like giving up a bit of control? Because obviously you're not looking through a viewfinder. You're not moving. You're kind of sta like stationary. Nah, your... it just felt like a normal photo shoot. Holy shit! Interesting. Yeah. Everything about it feels like the same because, like, I would say to like this morning, I would say to Tanya's boyfriend, "Okay, can you just because he can see the frame?" So I'd be like, "Okay, just up a little bit to the right, a little bit down, a little bit," and then I would just direct Tanya and then take the photo. So it's really yeah. similar. It's just like an extra step, like an extra person. So. Uh, it is cool. a lot of it's a lot of communication, Ash said. Yeah, we actually did a challenge. I do weekly challenges here, and one of the Ash challenges said, yeah. was yeah, we, we did we did a FaceTime um, shoot challenge. So yeah, I'm too nervous to enter these challenges because everyone that's been producing stuff that I see is too good. Bruh, like, I, don't, I, you I, don't, need... I don't want to be that. No, I don't want to be that Bruh, old guy. Who dude, you, you need to join <laughs> this week. You need to join this week because there's a Nikon prize up for grabs. So this is the week to do it. All right, well, I this did need a D6, is... I think that's the price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is, this week we have a theme of emotion. So it's a it's a photo, one photograph that can convey emotion. And I'm going to show some examples on the stream tomorrow. So um, that's what we're going to be doing. Well, I've yeah. had a lot of those over a few months. So, uh, <laughs> you know. It's, it's a self-portrait. <laughs> yeah. It'll literally be just a self -portrait. Legit, legit. Uh, Peter's saying the same thing. So, guys, Peter, you need to enter as well. Come on, guys. You guys are phenomenal <laughs> photographers. So. Someone's predicted I'm going to win. Hell no. Yeah. And there's so much, <laughs> so much love for you. Um, well, I mean, um, it's nice to see that people are interested. Like, I don't expect it to be. Like, it's 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 cool. Like, obviously, you're doing a really good thing. I like that uh, there's a lot of aspiring photographers in here that are coming to you for inspiration for guidance for advice and stuff and it's really nice like well it's, it's coming to it's the community that's it's not just me the community is providing the mutual inspiration yeah. of everybody yeah. so <laughs> oh, fantastic. well i mean like all power and good luck to everyone it's good to sort of see that the that the people's creativity is still flowing totally. even if mine's not as much but it will get there it'll come back yeah uh, well, thank you so much again. Actually, Six just went live, so maybe we'll go raid him because he usually does stream. <laughs> he, he does stream. Uh, he's a comedi uh, uh, comedian photographer? A comedy photographer? He basically just photographs comedians. So, um, That's fun. Yes. Uh, lots of love for you in the chat, Megan. So thank you so much for sharing so openly. Um, and... Uh, yeah, lots of thanks for you. So thank you everyone for showing the love. Let's go and raid six. Drop your MGH emotes. Show all of the love to him. Just drop him a follow. He's an amazing photographer. Um, I shall just get that teed up actually. I always forget to do that. I actually need to do a thing <laughs> so we can do that. Oh, that's uh, all good. Okay. Let's do... Say goodbye to everybody. You guys are awesome. Um, thank you so much. We'll be chatting. I'll be here tomorrow again, 10 a.m., so a little bit earlier. We're going to raid yeah. now. See you guys. Bye, everyone. Um,